Greetings, everyone. This is a shot of whiskey, and boy, do I have an interesting couple of articles for you today. One leads up to the other one, or at least that is what I decree. I think I just decreed my pants. Both of these articles come from the garbage feminazi dump site called Medium. So, of course, you know, it's going to be a bunch of man bashing bullshit from women who do not have the ability to think properly. Women are such idiots. Yet despite their obvious flaws, there is some pretty damn good points here and there in these articles, which they'd probably get a better idea of it if they actually tried to learn and understand the opposite sex. But then if they did that, they wouldn't be feminists, would they? Let's go ahead and get started with this. The first article, posted on April 7th, A Man in His 30s Explains to Me What's Wrong with Women in Their 30s, by Hannah First. Now, you would think that this article title would indicate that she actually had a conversation with a guy who opened up about that being the topic. But no, no, that would be too much of a challenge for a feminist to achieve. Oh, well. Now, speaking of feminist, look here at her body posturing here in this avatar. She kind of has this whole sloshed over like, oh, I'm so much better than you look. I mean, she ain't too bad looking for someone in her early 30s, but you know. Whatever. She chose her life. Now I'm going to go ahead and let you guys read this opening part where she's complaining about getting an unsolicited message on a dating app. Oh no, how horrible. But I also want to take this opportunity to explain that I am intentionally skipping over certain parts. Partially it's because there's a lot of stuff in here that's boring and stupid. And the other part is I'm trying to save you guys on time because... We're men, we're busy, we got lives to live. So let's go ahead and just get this done over with. Hopefully you have finished reading this part. Let's go on to the next. His stats are 39 years old, 6 foot. How many women love their men to be 6 foot tall at least? Work as blank. Never married, no kids. Yeah, a lot of women would see that as being highly valuable in and of itself. Here's the next part, and I have underlined a variety of things that shows her mindset going into this. So, completely charmed and only mildly creeped out. If you were mildly creeped out, you were not completely charmed. Dear God. And then the rest of the stuff that follows in the next couple of paragraphs as she's talking about how things were going, very awkwardly say hello, he's not as quick-witted, pretty dull, blandly equally bland pasta. I mean, she's just negative after negative after negative. It's like she wasn't even trying to look for something positive to come from this day. Oh, but it gets more interesting. Since there's no romantic connection that you probably weren't even trying to look for, I decide to delve a little deeper into his dating experiences for the digital content, meaning she was going to do all of this just so she would have something to write about on this garbage website. He proceeds to tell me everything that's wrong with women in their 30s. And geez, as a 30-something-year-old woman, it's enlightening. Code word, insulting. She's not enlightened by this, otherwise she would learn something. No, she's offended by it, and wants you to be offended by it too, because OMG, men have standards. One of his biggest gripes is that men in their late 30s have to lower their standards significantly. Well, yeah, that's because women around their age bracket have less to offer. They're of less value. So, yeah, they have to lower their standards if they want something that's near their age. If they want something near their age. Case in point, his very good-looking friend. Get this, his friend, did I mention he's good-looking, swiped right on a girl that he never would have swept right on in his early 30s. Gee, I wonder why. What's wrong with her, I ask. He motions to his face. Something just wasn't right. I think he means she's ugly, but again, I'm impressed with how seamlessly he thinks he's hiding his superficiality. Which means she's imagining it. Now, he could have a point. Or, I guess she could have a point. It could be her looks. Could have been something else. Something just wasn't right. He may have been indicating that this woman was cuckoo. Hard to say. According to her, he's not giving a whole lot of information. Could very well be that he himself doesn't really fully know. His friend probably didn't really give him that much information. 
But then again, we're talking about a feminist. Women do not understand men, especially women who develop their entire lives around the idea that men are bad. He also has issues, he tells me, with Instagram filters. Well, yeah, because some of those things are literally designed to make people look better. They lie to people. He tells me the story of a woman he chatted to for four months via text. In her photos, she's hot. Like, super hot. But then they met, and she has. He gestured to the wrinkles under his eyes. I look confused. Wrinkles? Yeah, he says. And like, bags. Well, yeah, that's because those are signs to us guys that this is an older woman. Like, ridiculously older. Like, this woman should be a grandma and not a potential life partner to help me make kids. I did skip this earlier. The dude did indicate to her at some point that he wanted to have children. And a woman who looks like she should be a grandma is usually not old enough to make her own children with a dude. That's just how it works. I'm sorry that your little feminist brain doesn't understand that. Then things quickly go into talking about her age. I'm 32, I say. Yep, okay, so I've noticed that women over 34 have great banter on text, but then you meet them in person and there's no banter whatsoever. Now maybe that's true, and I think a lot of that, again in cases where it is true, is probably because these women going through their 20s and early 30s probably never really had to develop their talking skills all too well, their bantering skills at all whatsoever, because they had their looks to rely on. So... Now that these women are starting to lose their looks, they're having to rely on these, and they don't have those skills, and that's probably why this guy doesn't really like it so much. Now, you may notice this top highlight here. This is something that she put in. Yeah, it's definitely because they're over 34, I think. It has nothing to do with the fact you're dead inside. Maybe she has a point. Maybe this guy really is that boring. Or maybe it has to do with the fact that you went into this with extremely low expectations, being bored before you guys even sat down and ordered food. You thought that the introduction of one another was dull. So, how can we really take your opinion of the guy at all in any sort of a serious light? Let's continue. Here's the last three lines from her piece, and I find them to be so damn hilarious. You sound pretty bitter, I say. <laughs> yeah, look who's talking. He nods. It's fucking brutal out there. I look back at him, nodding my head in agreement. It sure is. <laughs> yeah, he's the bitter one. Sure. Okay. Yeah, whatever. I've been burned so many times before. Despite this woman writing a very short article describing a date that she went into just so she can have content for this website about a month later so about a week from our perspective another medium contributor named Carlin Bessia I'm guessing is how to pronounce that wrote this piece why is finding a good man so hard for single women over 35 the answer is found in the eligible bachelor paradox which, a little bit of a spoiler, it's just a theory. Which, theory does not mean proven fact. It's one potential answer. And it's one that has some truth to it. It's not too far off. But of course, being a feminist, she misses the mark altogether. Just the opening of the article itself could be enough to make a video describing just how stupid this woman is. On our third date, he told me he had sex with hundreds of prostitutes while he was married. You might be picturing a toothless, unemployable criminal, but he was a charming, intelligent, attractive, and successful lawyer. I had fallen hard for him in a short time period. His confession blindsided me. Okay, lady, here's the thing. You're a moron. Only a moron would think that somebody who is an unemployable criminal would be having sex with hundreds of prostitutes while being married. You would have to have a steady income in order to pay for your wife and to pay for hundreds of prostitutes at the same time. You are stupid. And this really shouldn't be that much of a surprise to you 
if you are admitting he's charming, intelligent, and attractive, oh, and successful. Because that means he can get them. He can get a lot of ladies interested in him, even if they are the ones that he has to pay for just to get 30 minutes of happy time. He is still capable of it. How do you not understand this? But let's keep going. I am not alone. It's a question that many women over 35 keep asking. Where have all the good men gone? Away from you. Fortunately, economics and game theory have an answer. The Eligible Bachelor Paradox. Game theorist Mark Gimmine? Gimmine? Whatever, I'm just going to say G. Mark G developed this theory to explain why the dating pool of eligible men shrinks for women after age 35. Okay, and it is actually kind of interesting. Buckle up, you are about to get a scary lesson on why you should settle for Mr. Good Enough. According to G, new bio women fall on a spectrum of either high or low quality. High quality women possess attractiveness and social adeptness, while low quality women have less of these traits. But high quality women have the majority of the bargaining power. <laughs> really, they have all of it. In the dating market, so they hold out for Mr. Right. Now, I know that she's a feminist, so she probably wouldn't think like this. But I would slightly change this to have it be domestic adeptness rather than social adeptness. Because men, especially the higher quality men, tend to prefer a woman who's better when it comes to house affairs rather than being able to be social. But then again, this is a feminist writing this, so maybe she sees the whole domestic thing as being part of societal expectations, and that's why social was used here. But then again, she's also saying this is according to G, so maybe he's a feminist, or maybe he just chose the wording for some other reason. I don't know. As those women age, their dating pool of eligible bachelors gets smaller and smaller as the high-quality men are coupled with less choosy women. Okay, fair enough. And as the numbers of eligible bachelors decrease, those high-quality women continue to compete for the same limited number of high-quality men. I personally would add, same with the low-quality women. A lot of low-quality women think that they deserve the high-quality men. But, you know... Again, we're talking about a feminist here. She doesn't seem to understand that. But these women do not lower their standards. Well, I would say a bunch of women in all sorts of different quality levels don't lower their standards. Mostly because they are used to calling the shots and might be blissfully unaware that their dating clout is diminishing. True. The bloom may be coming off the rose, but the rose still doesn't want to grow with weeds. That's actually a pretty good metaphor. And besides, many women decide that being single and cultivating their own damn garden is a better option. Yeah, until they decide that they want someone to be with them because they're getting older, and then they start asking the question of, where have all the good men gone? Hey, sweet cheeks. Hmm? You free? Want to have some fun with us? Say, you're pretty young. Are you a high school student? Huh? Hey. Wait! The eligible bachelor paradox is illustrated with data from dating apps. According to a 2019 Pew Research Century study, which some of us MGTOW have used this very same study to say this exact same thing, 57% of men reported that they did not receive enough messages, while only 24% of women reported the same. Hmm, I wonder why that is. Skipping over some crap that involves the pay gap, Clearly, this illustrates what Darwin knew all along. It's lady's choice. And if you feel like the choice is yours, you are more likely to delay that choice and wait for an ideal partner. Yeah, how is that turning out for you, feminazi? Huh? Damn, this sucks. And she was cute, too. A little bit further down. Consequently, educated and uneducated women both flock to urban areas in hopes of finding Mr. Right. Unfortunately, the most eligible bachelors living in urban areas do not particularly care whether a woman is intelligent, educated, or successful. He cares if she is attractive. Now, this is what's funny. Here in the parentheses, she says, I have already tackled this subject, and the comments from men proved my point. 
Okay, so you would think, just looking at this, that she understands that we men are visual creatures. We don't give a damn if you're educated. We don't. That means nothing to us. Oh, and we also don't give a damn if you're financially successful. We don't care. But she still does not get it. Here, this is the title of the article that she provides a link to. <laughs> So we're getting closer to the end of the article. I'm skipping down to the last few bits of it just because of how fucking wonky and delusional this bitch has become. Thanks, in my opinion, thanks to the feminazi boot camp training she got in college. And most women do not want to choose a man based on his bank account. Their financial independence allows them to choose someone based on kindness, intelligence, ambition, humor, and loyalty. But here is the rub. Most men are emasculate. <laughs> Most men are emasculate. <laughs> Most men are emasculated by the woman who can pay her own bills. They don't want that independent woman. Well, yeah, we don't want that because it means nothing to us. We don't care if she has money. It means zero to us. Now, here are her three final paragraphs, and I agree with two and a half of them. This leaves many of us in a thorny conundrum. And you see, she just used two different rose-themed puns in one half of a sentence. I love that. Lower our standards or stay single, which is reasonable. And as the hourglass empties, many of us are well aware that our rose is turning to dust. Yeah, that sounds like something that Undead Chronic would say. And I would like to point out, this is why a lot of the women who think that they can handle their own damn garden, why they tend to change their mind. The rose is turning to dust. They're getting a wake-up call. Her highlighted part, I fully agree with this. Personally, I prefer to stay single until I find Mr. Doesn't Have Sex with Prostitutes. That's a low enough bar. Yeah, that is definitely low enough. I mean, no one should be willing to settle with someone who they know is going to go out there and cheat on them, be it with prostitutes or ex-lovers or random people that they meet. No, just, no, not at all. Do not settle for anyone who is a cheater. Not okay. She concludes with, he is out there. Um, are you sure about that? Really? I mean, you're basing this off of what? Which... Princess fairy tale story is your inspiration for believing that he is out there. And perhaps he doesn't have the fancy education. Well, yeah, that could be true. If you lower your standards, which you're a feminist, you probably won't. But if you were to, yeah, probably the right guy for you doesn't have that fancy education that you seem to think matters so much about you and your fellow womanhood. Or whatever. But, you know, let's be real. She probably wouldn't give that guy the time of day because he doesn't have the fancy education. But he also won't give me anything to write about. Bull. That last sentence is such garbage. We all know, lady that you will find anything to complain about, especially if it's a man, especially if it's a man that you let into your life. Why? Because you are a professional victim. You are paid to complain, no matter how stupid and imbecilic and void of reality it is. I wouldn't be surprised if you were to intentionally make something up just to have fodder for your fan fiction. Nothing to write about. Look. What crap? What absolute crap? WWE storylines are more convincing than that. Ugh. Anyways, I gotta start getting ready for work. And if I didn't have to, I probably would have a drink right now. But, you know, whatever. We can't drink all the time, can we? However, with that being said, if you abuse alcohol, it will abuse you back. Take care, everyone. Get out of here!